Okay. Oh my god, I'm dead! No! I saw that coming! I was like, what do I do? Welcome back to a very special episode of Saturday Afternoon Gaming. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we're hopping into Cabal by popular request. So we got the good old-fashioned Commodore 64 load screens here. Um, I say by popular request, uh, I have a new patron who signed up recently, and he requested uh, a look at Cabal on the Commodore 64, and... I thought that'd be, that was a great idea, actually. I've definitely played Cabal before, but I always played it on the NES uh, with my uncle growing up. It's a two-player sort of shooter game, kind of in the realm of something like, um, I mean, my, my patron said it best himself, Operation Wolf, except that you actually have a character running around on the screen and you actually have to dodge bullets. So with superior lightning reactions, you can increase and... Wait, you can increase the... can increase the odds in your favor. Is that a typo? In the, in the opening menu here? That's actually pretty hilarious. Um, anyway, it's kind of a cool cool idea for a shooter game. I have had this one on my to play list because I've long wanted to come back and play the NES version, and I still will at some point. I think that's a great game to play two players with somebody, so at some point maybe I'll uh, corral someone into playing that with me. But for today, I wanted to uh, do something special uh, for this uh, for this new fine fellow who decided to support me. And uh, so today we're going to take a look at Cabal on the Commodore 64 here. Now, actually, one other really nice thing about this request is uh, uh, the, the person who requested it actually wrote up a long write up about this game and like how to get it to work and stuff like that, which I appreciate because Commodore 64 games are not always the easiest to get working. But he told me one bit of trivia that to this day I wasn't aware of why this was true. But for anyone who's played a Commodore 64 game, and this vexed me back when I played the great Gianna sisters on Commodore 64. Um, if you plug a joystick into joystick port number one, it typically doesn't work in Commodore 64 games. And I had no idea why that was the case. Uh, this fellow, however, explained uh, that basically when uh, w the way the Commodore 64 was made, the joystick one port would often interfere with the keyboard uh, controls and would sometimes send keyboard inputs along with button presses. And so developers switched to joystick port number two. So I never knew how come uh, Commodore 64 games wanted you to set up joystick port number two. And that actually confused me again on the great Genesis I was like, why is my joystick not working? It's busted. But I had to switch uh, my emulator to go to joystick port number two. Anyway, without further ado, let's just go ahead and hop into the game here. And we can talk more about uh, Cabal. So this is Cabal starting on level one dash one. Uh, I think there's five worlds, basically. And in each world, you basically just show up in a village and gun everyone down which is classic 80s diplomacy. You just show up into South American countries and just, I mean, just kill everyone, right? You know, uh, everyone's bad. You know, let the bullets sort out the justice. Uh, but as you can see, it's basically like a shooter game, uh, like Operation Wolf, except that, ooh, we got a machine gun, except that you actually have to move your guy around and dodge bullets. And... So this game, uh, oh man, I can't believe I dodged that. This game started its life as an arcade game. Ooh. So you you might notice that I'm walking through bullets. Bullets actually exist in the, the like Z plane, like the third dimension, and you can walk by them until they sort of hit the bottom of the screen. Uh, and I am actually doing amazing. I did a test run of this before I started recording just to see if I still had the old cabal in me. Um, but I was not doing this good in my test run. But, uh, but yeah, it's kind of a cool game. In the NES and I believe also in the arcade version, you can, uh, oh god, I took a bullet. You can roll, and so if you're stuck in a corner and there's all these bullets flying towards you, you can, like, roll out of the way. In the Commodore 64 version, I was not able here to figure out how to roll, so I don't know if you can roll or not. Maybe this guy's never heard of rolling. But uh, this the, the game features destructible environments, which is actually pretty cool. And so in the arcade version, the NES version, even the Commodore 64 version right here, as you can see, you can just blow up enemy cover. So it's sort of like you have cover, but the enemies have cover too. 
Also, if you are not watching where you shoot, you can definitely blow up your own cover. And I did that back in the day when I was a kid playing this game. All right, machine gun upgrade again. Oh, yeah, look, the, the, the crosshair now means business. Now we have a beastly machine gun. I don't know how much ammo uh, we have in this thing. Uh, I, I seem to recall in some of the other versions you had limit. Yeah, I just ran out of ammo. So you do have limited ammo. Uh, one downside to this game is you can't move your character without also moving your crosshair. So, um, this game, I think, this, this style of game would actually, I think, be ripe for a remake these days. Now that we have, now that we have figured out the technology behind, uh, dual thumbsticks. You know, a lot of our controllers nowadays have dual thumbsticks. I think dual thumbsticks would, uh, would work well in this style of game. And I'm actually surprised that the arcade version, oh god, rat of grenades. We have to kill that trek the old-fashioned way. With bullets and moxie. America 80 style. <laughs> oh, we passed the level too. Wow, I'm actually doing way better than in my uh, in my test run here. Um, but I'm actually surprised the arcade version of this game didn't have dual joysticks, because it seems like it would have been ripe for that. Um, one other thing about this Commodore 64 game is that it does not have music. And actually, as someone who played... A little bit of Cabal in the NES back in the day when I started this up. I was like, hey, there's no music. That's a bit of a bummer. And I, I was wondering, like, sometimes... Ooh, a helicopter. That's cool. Oh, God. I was wondering if maybe there were different versions. Because sometimes for these old games, uh, like on Commodore and Amiga and stuff, sometimes the same game was made by multiple publishers. And some versions of slightly different graphics and stuff. So I did actually go and check. But uh, unfortunately... None of the Commodore 64 versions have music. However, with the power of the future and of modern editing... Oh, that guy rolled. Did you see that? The enemies are rolling away. Oh, we got them. I remember those guys, actually, uh, from from the NES version. They would roll around. You have to shoot them a bunch of times before they finally die. They're pesky buggers. Anyway, with the... With the, uh, with the oh, what is that? What are those guys? Medics. Am I supposed to shoot them? Um, oh, God. That guy's trying to kill me. Oh, my God. All these guys are trying to kill me. Okay, with the power of modern future, let's add some music. Yeah, there we go. All right, so this is this is what uh, this is what the badass soundtrack sounded like if you played this on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Uh, but other than that, it's it's virtually the same game, uh, except your guy doesn't roll in this version. I like how when you pass the level, it just destructs anything remaining on the screen. Like, your guy didn't just come here to kill the enemy dictator or whatever. He literally came to wipe out everything they hold dear. He's, like, destroying buildings, technology, vehicles, anything he can, anything he can access. Oh, that's like a grenade lobbing truck. Um, oh, oh yeah. Oh, we shot a bomb and that bomb had grenades on the inside. That's handy for us. Oh, God. Oh, we actually survived. All right, you rolling bastard. Some of these guys uh, definitely sort of took circus training because they're really good at rolling around, some of the bad guys here. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Oh, I took that bullet. That was one instance where I was trying to shoot in one direction and I wanted to move in the other, and a, a second uh, joystick uh, would have definitely done well there. Come here. Nobody flies a helicopter. That guy wasn't even aiming at me. <laughs> they were like, okay, there's an American over there. He's shooting up everything. Can you just go kill him? And the helicopter's guy's like, got it. He flies all the way near me, and then he just fires in an empty plot of land, you know, like 10 feet away. Doesn't even try to actually hit me. That, uh, that guy either needs glasses, or he just doesn't care about war. He's like, yeah, I'm in a dictator's army, but my heart is really in dance. You know, I'm one of those... Warrior guys, he's not really into war so much as I am into dance. Oh, I thought this was a cutscene. I put, I almost put my controller down. Okay, they want us to kill this bomb thing. Oh my god, a bomb landed right on me. So I like how there's like a little faux meter there, and that tells you how much health, basically, the uh, enemies have. Oh god. So, oh my god, we have to build this up so high. I don't know if I can continue to dodge uh, grenades for this long. Oh, I can't believe that worked. Okay, go, 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 go. Oh my god, there's too much. There's too many. Wow, this is actually super stressful. Okay. <laughs> it's like you, you definitely have to stop shooting once those grenades start landing and you have to start dodging. Um... 
Another fun fact about this game is that the Commodore 64 joysticks only had a single button. Oh my god, I'm totally dead. I'm screwed! Oh, I lived! I lived! I lived! Um, the Commodore 64 joysticks- oh, he's dead. Only had one button. So, really, you have a joystick and you have one button to shoot. However, there was a second button in the game, which is actually mapped to the space bar on the keyboard that lets you throw a grenade. Um, and so, actually, uh, the fellow who recommended this game to me, um, he, he actually specifically recommended, he was like, look, you should probably just go ahead and map uh, Spacebar to be the second button on your, your controller, your joystick. It'll make the game far more playable. And again, I actually, I actually really appreciate that. I've definitely had people um, suggest games to me in the past, but I don't think anybody has like specifically uh, you know, made suggestions about how to like play it on a modern computer or things to watch out for things would make it tricky I mean not that it's like I wouldn't play a recommendation if people didn't do that, but um, I, just, I thought it was thoughtful to be honest to be totally honest. I was like, oh, that's, that's nice of the guy um, And yeah, he did tell me some things about Commodore 64 that I already knew um, like he mentioned some things about tape versus or sorry cassettes versus uh, discs and, and you know uh, different formats for the Commodore 64. Um, and I'm actually a huge fan of the 8-Bit guy. I watch like almost all his videos and he's definitely talked about uh, how the Commodore 64 has a disk drive and in that disk drive was like a whole separate CPU. So you could like send commands to the disk drive and it would like basically just run. Uh, you could even, I think you could even like unplug it from the Commodore 64 and it would just keep going. So, you know, some of the things I knew, but I mean, that's fair. Um, I don't think the the uh the new fan there was uh trying to say i didn't know things but he was just like hey look i'll try and make your life easier for you so long story short i appreciate it um but again i'm not saying that's uh, a must you know if you want to recommend me a zx spectrum game and you're like you know you you figure out how to play it yourself um you know that's a, a fairly mean way to to request a game but if the game looks good i'll probably still play it who are we kidding? If the game looks good, I'll probably still play it. That's like my, uh, that could be, uh, my, uh, oh god. Uh, not famous last words, but like my motto, my ammo. Oh, a machine gun. Come here, machine gun. Oh god. That was risky to get that. So once you have the machine gun, obviously you don't want to waste too many bullets. It'd be nice if there was one other button that was like stand still and move the cursor. Um, but I think that's where the dual analog stick that I'm thinking of would have come into play for this game. This game was like a moderate success, apparently, back in the days, like back in the arcade days. But like, wasn't a huge success. And I think it found more success. And you might be wondering why that level just ended, by the way. It's just, it, once you kill enough guys, the level ends. So you have a faux bar at the bottom. When that faux bar gets high enough, then the enemy team's like, all right, you win. <laughs> War over, we surrender. So sometimes you just you just end like mid battle like that. But um, but yeah, this game was moderately successful in the arcades, but it was I think a bit more successful in the home market. You know, in the various ports on uh, Commodore, Amiga. It was ported on DOS too, and Nintendo, and various other systems. Um, oh my God, there's nowhere to go there. But. Um, but I don't think it ever became like super, super popular, which actually I feel like is a bit of a shame because again, I, I was, I am familiar with this game. I did play it back in the day. Um, again, played the NES version, but I always thought it was a cool game and a neat idea for a game. And I feel like it's very unique. Oh crap. It's a, definitely a very unique game. Um, like I can't think of too many other games that are quite like a ball here. Um, oh my god, like it's it's a very action intense game And I remember so you can play two players at the same time And I think you can in the Commodore version here, too And I remember like having like me and my uncle were like rolling around the screen He's like cover the top and I'm like oh tank grenade grenade, you know and like we're like just just Desperately trying to hold on to the battlefield keeping ourselves from being overwhelmed by the enemies here um, Also, where are we right now? It looks like we're in cottage country like, like we've left the South American jungle and we're in just like a, an area with like nice cedars and pines. There's like a willow tree behind, you know, like I we're, we're in like uh, we're in like Michigan. I don't know. This does not look like uh, the kind of place you'd find uh, like terrorists and stuff. 
but okay, can we destroy the houses? One of the fun things about every level of Cabal is figuring out what part of the environment's destructible. Oh yeah, oh, we got a machine gun too. Oh, we lost the machine gun instantly! You bastard, why are all these scuba divers heavily armed? Who's like, I'm gonna go scuba diving in this lake. It's not even like, you know, <laughs> an ocean. I'm gonna go scuba diving in this lake and uh, give me my AR-15 assault rifle, if you will, honey. I just have a feeling that when I pop out from the water, there's gonna be a paramilitary guy waiting to kill me. And I wanna be able to fire back. Or alternatively, I guess if we assume these guys are part of the army, part of this army that I'm destroying, the boss is like, okay, look, we got enough guys on land. We got guys in helicopters, guys in tanks. Oh, it's a boss again. I didn't even realize. We, 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 we even have our own personal submarine. What I need you to do is put on this scuba gear, and I need you to go underwater and pop up when you least suspect it. When the, oh, crap. When the, when the dude least suspects it and kill him. Crap, we died. I actually have input a cheat to allow us to continue if we want. Did I put in my name? I'm gonna put in my name. But yeah, basically the big bad guy's like, look, we, we need some people to pop out from under the water. I think this is, this would probably be the same bad guy who was in charge of Bayou Billy. Because I remember in the adventures of Bayou Billy, guys would also just pop up out of the water and try and kill you. Okay, let's see if this cheat works or not. There's no continue in this game. But let's see if we can sort of fake a continue here. So if I press control... Oh yeah, the level just ended. So that should skip me ahead a whole world. So I should now be on 2-1, I think. Oh no, that's just level 1-2. Hold on, I'm going to try it. The C is the other button. It does nothing. All right, we've made it back. Using some cheats, skipping one level at a time. I think if I skip this level, it will bring out the boss. And then we can uh, return. Yeah, here we go. All right, this is the boss fight I died on. So yeah, I used a little bit of cheating to bring myself back up to where we died. But uh, this will be like our last continue. We'll get as far as we can get. And after this, however far we get is however far we get. So uh, yeah, oh my god. Okay, go, 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 run, run, run. I feel like this guy is not that hard. You just sort of have to... Oh my god, actually... Oh god, okay. So... You kind of just need to, like, stay right in front of him and then just move slightly crap. Oh no, I threw away two lives! Instantly, all right, let's start using some grenades on this guy. Oh, he actually ran away. Uh-oh. Look how little damage I've done to him. Oh no, is this as far as we get in Cabal? I like how when you shoot uh, higher or lower than the midpoint of the screen, your guy, like, ducks or unducks. Um, oh my god, this is gonna take forever to kill this guy. I'm actually kind of getting the hang of it. Go, 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 go. So you kind of want to stay, like, right in front of him and then just, like, dodge one way or the other. You know what, there's like a very simple and enjoyable pleasure in life, which is figuring out boss patterns in old video games. I don't know what it is, like maybe as a child of the 80s, I have like some kind of, you know, video game specific form of like ADD, but there, there's something very pleasurable about figuring out these like boss patterns. I don't know what it is. But uh, yeah. Here's, here's, here's my last bit of fun fact trivia for the day. Man, I can't believe we just threw two lives away. That was so stupid. I mean, I guess we cheated our way back here, so... <laughs> the fact that we only have two lives is kind of fair. But, uh... Um, and by the way, I, I know I keep talking about the NES version of this game, but I swear I'm not, like, that biased towards the NES. It's just that I really didn't see any, like, trivia about the Commodore 64 version or anything like that. Um, other than the fact that this game was originally released on tape, but I, uh, when I got the recommendation, um, the, uh, the new fan pointed me towards a cartridge, um, a cartridge port of this game, which basically cartridge games on the Commodore 64 load a lot faster than tape-based games, so that was another very helpful tip for playing this game today that was passed on to me, uh, when the, uh, request was made. But, um... 
These look like garbage cans or Super Mario Brothers warp pipes here. Like, like silver warp pipes. Maybe uh, Mario will show up and we can like uh, machine gun him. I think you can also get a bazooka in this game. I don't know how to equip it though. I think it's like one and two. Equip the bazooka. Oh, I should throw a grenade at that thing. Oh, bad bullets everywhere. Okay, get the grenades. Oh, grenades are actually really valuable in this game. They basically one shot tanks and stuff like that. So um, it makes it a lot easier for keeping the screen clear. If you can, uh, if you can just lob grenades as soon as a tank appears. Oh yeah. Anyway, my last bit of trivia, and it happens, it just so happens to be for the NES version of the game. No judges from you guys, please. Uh, but uh, when the, when Rare, who did the port of this game, uh, was sort of approved to do the port. They were given an arcade cabinet of this game, but they were not actually given uh, the source code. So what they, what the developers had to do is play the arcade version and then try and like eyeball the sprites and stuff and then redraw them from memory and like recreate the game's logic and stuff just from playing the game. I think that's actually kind of hilarious um, and interesting. And if you do go and play the NES version, or like one day we will, and you guys will be able to see it then. But if you, if you do go and play it, it is actually like a pretty close, uh, pretty close port uh, to the arcade version. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't seem inferior or anything like that. It just sort of seems like yeah, it it looks it feels the same to me as any other. NES port of an arcade game back in the day, so I think Rare did a pretty good job. Which is, you would expect them to. I mean, Rare's a pretty good company. Um, they're up there with, like, Konami and stuff back in the day. I mean, Capcom was, like, the cream of the crop, I think. Konami, though, they made really good games, too. Um, how do we get that guy? Oh, there we go. The Rolling Guys, it's interesting, I forgot about them. They went away for a while, now they're back. And... They're actually a little tricky. It's sometimes easier to not even bother trying to kill the rolly guys. Because again, the way you beat a level is you just kill enough guys. If you show up into a room and kill enough people, then eventually the level ends. <laughs> I love that logic. Like, the, like there's no specific set of guys you're supposed to kill. There's no set enemies or anything. It's just, you're just showing up on a military base. Or in this case, not even a military base. It's like... I don't know what you're supposed to do. Oh, crap. I was so fixated on shooting those uh, medical guys that I died. Okay. Oh, we got some grenades, though. Oh, my God. We died again. Oh, no. Okay, we got to pull together. There's way too many guys on the screen. Way too many guys on the screen here. You die already. Die, die. Die, die. I'm just going to let the helicopters go because, like, the amount... I would have to shoot at the helicopter to kill it uh, would be too much. And I'm lobbing grenades like crazy because I just want to pass the level. Yikes. So we are in like world three or whatever. Like if, assuming we beat this boss, we'll be on world four. We'll have gotten pretty far in the game. It's actually pretty good. Again, I'm pretty sure. I mean, I could be mistaken, but I'm pretty sure there's only, oh, we killed it right before it killed our barrier. Pretty sure there's only five, uh, five worlds in the game. I wish our barriers could take more than one hit. Like, honestly. Like, it does kind of feel like a bit cheap that after one hit, they go down. Oh god, oh god. Oh god, nice try. Oh, two, one grenade killed two tanks. That's how you do it. There's some guys on a motorcycle or something. Let's grenade them. Oh, because I don't need their, their hassle. Oh, man. Okay, if you shoot those medical guys, I think they drop grenades. I think that's their deal. Pull that and that. Oh, my God. It's hitting it's, it's hitting a point where, like, I literally can't... Oh, I thought I was safe there. I literally can't kill all the guys on the screen, so I have to make strategic decisions about, like, who to kill and who to just avoid. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Bullets everywhere. Have I killed enough people yet? We're so close. Just... If one or two more of you could die, no! No! Oh, somehow I passed the level. They gave me that one. Okay, I don't know what the hell's gonna happen here. Okay, that was pretty easy, actually. Um, 
Okay, we just have to be really careful about these things. And if we are, just really patient. The bosses in this game are definitely not hard. And they have, like, pretty simple patterns. But again, one of those simple pleasures in life is just figuring out a boss pattern, I find. I'm not rushing it. Not trying to be a hero. Which is funny in a game about, uh, behind the... You know, behind the enemy lines commando who's, like, dropped behind to, like, wipe out all the enemy terrorists or whatever. I don't even know what my mission is. I'm, uh... I'm, I'm just your, your... Everyday Arnold Schwarzenegger type who's just out to kill everyone. Just a regular, everyday, military Rambo. Okay. Oh my god, I'm dead! No! I saw that coming! I was like, what do I do? What do I do? Alright, well... I think we gave Cabal here a pretty good shot. Um... You know, definitely, I might have, you know, massaged my way back into, uh, you know, back to, back to level three or whatever, where, where I died the first time, but I think that that's going to be it for today. Um, as I say, you know, I, I like Cabal. I've played it back in the day. It's been on my to playlist. The NES version at least has. And so one day, probably not anytime super soon, but one day I will come back and I'll give the NES version a shot. But this was like a fun throwback. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, and if you guys have any fun memories of Cabal, if you guys played this back in the day and you have any cool tips or tricks or just want to just want to reminisce, you know, just want to just just want to share, share your memories. Um, feel free to in the comments down below. I like to hear your guys takes on games as always. And uh, as always, I hope you guys had fun today. And if you did, don't forget to like the video and all that stuff. And uh, in the meantime, um, you all take care of yourselves, and I will see you soon. Alrighty, guys. Peace. No! I saw that coming. I was like, what do I do?